Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to me Dave Pumphouse with Rise of the White Sun. It's a little game that I've had my eye on for about the last six months. It's been sitting there waiting on my wish list. It came out ooh, either yesterday or the day before yesterday and we're going to give it a little bit of a playthrough. It's about Chinese Civil War and everything that went down. I'm looking forward to it. I want you to join with me as we play. So yeah, let's just check it out. Let's just get stuck into it. Play. Alright. Select a scenario. Fighting for Guangxi, the Shanghai Uprising, the Yunnan Guangxi War, the Guangzhou Revolutionary Base. Well, let's start the first one on the list, shall we? Uh, 1924. Uh, enter the codes to unlock the Green Gang. Oh, I wanted to play the Green Gang as well. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> we won't do that. Um, all right. Well, let's let's just try the 1924 Guangxi scenario here. Lu Rongting is governing the province in the name of the Beijing government. But has, but his rule is no longer accepted. Local warlords and a new Guangxi clique are rising to challenge his power. Okay, so we've got the old Guangxi clique, led by Lu Rongting, uh, fighting to restore its contested power over Guangxi. Complexity medium, difficulty medium. We've got Guangxi clique is on its way to take over the province in the name of the revolution. Okay, so that, that would be the, the kind of Republican Revolution rather than the other ones, I suppose. And then we've got, supported by powerful, the powerful Wu Peifu, Shen Hongying is reclaiming the province of Guangxi. He joined forces with the new Guangxi clique to oust Lu Rongting. I'm going to go for what I believe is the, the national the nationalists. Let's try it. Loading. Please wait. Ho ho. Well, yeah, we'll start. We'll start playing, and we'll see who stops by. Oh, we might have to sort out the, the volume. Here. That'll do. Guangxi. Although a very poor province, is coveted by its most powerful neighbours to the north, west and east. Lu Rongting, the current governor, has not been able to make sufficiently powerful allies. And his power is contested by the clique of Guangxi, won over to the republican ideals of Sun Yat-sen. Arriving, arriving from Hunan, General Shen Hongying, supported by powerful warlord of Wu Peifu, also claimed the province. Which faction will rule Guangxi? Only the results of the bloody fights and bold treasons will tell. You have 23 turns to take control of the whole province with your faction. All right. Okay. What you should you do now? This is a short scenario to introduce you to military operations. Just select your units on the map and move them around to fight enemies. Order your unit to move to an area where there is an enemy unit. Okay. You don't gain automatic control of an area when you move into it. You may need to use a specific action to reclaim control. Click on the I icon to open a detailed window displaying information about your army. In that window, you will be able to give a, a lot of advanced orders to your unit. Alright, okay. Battle reports and moves reports are available from the small reports icons that will pop onto the map. Check them to understand better what is going on. Right. Well, I guess this is as good as a tutorial as we're going to get it. Uh, So, there's a map here and, and, and text behind it, but 
how we move the text and, and read that, I don't know. Um, okay, I've got a wiki here. Okay, let, let's just go down the list. Wiki how play. This wiki is not intended to contain absolutely all and everything about the game, but it's just to give you a solid basis to start playing. Most players should be able to figure out how to play just by trial and error. <laughs> With the help of a number of tooltips you'll encounter everywhere in the game. Okay, as a designer, I respect optimizing players who want to know the exact numbers, variables, and effects of each and every. If you are that kind of player, in-game wiki will surely not be enough to quench your thirst for knowledge. Just join Discord and ask your specific questions there. I'm ready to share most of the actions algorithms with you. Excellent. Good evening, Richard. Welcome. Well, we'll have to join the Discord later, but this is Rise of the White Sun. So... Okay, so factions is crossed out. Weird. Provinces. Rather than just reading the scripts, let's just maybe... Right, okay, so we're in Guangxi right now, and everything else is not playable. Okay. That's why it's all greyed out. Interesting. So... Display current character information, okay. Li Zhongren. Graduated from the Guangxi Military School. He then joined the armed forces led by Guangxi by Lu Rongting. He is siding with Guangzhou Revolutionary Government since 1923 and along with fellow officers from the new Guangxi clique, he is on his way to conquer Guangxi. Okay, he's an idealist. Gives your bonus to actions relying on your enthusiasm. He's okay. He's tiredless. Right. His character gains extra Qui each turn. I wonder what Qui is. He also has bonuses for the actions for which stamina is important, right? He's a strategist. This character is specifically talented for military operations. His troops will often perform better in combat. Good. Characters have huge bonuses in their relationships with people from their own province, including bribing characters and troops. And he's a southern, like myself. People from the north have huge malice when dealing with people from the south and vice versa. Alright. Okay, he's got 100 supporters. Uh, you spend Qui for each action. Your Qui score is reset at the beginning of each turn. Okay, what do we think of that, Richard? Uh, <laughs> face. Some actions will cost you face. To gain face from your titles, oh. Uh, from some actions. In the game, face represents a mix of prestige, reputation, and influence. And then we've got money and guns. So we've got 100 supporters with no guns. I guess, as a military man, our first priority will be probably to um, access some guns. Okay, diplomacy and faction management. We need to know about diplomacy in the Warlord era. Friends or foes, in most strategy games, you can only fight the factions you're at war with. In Rise of the White Sun, however, you can fight without a, a warning any faction that is not your ally. As if you were in permanent war with everybody. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the game system uh, takes into account the nothing personal cases and the personal hatred cases. You can only guess in which category you are by interacting with the other faction. If that system perturbs you, just remember you have no friends in this game. Okay. Relationship scores. Your faction has a relationship score with other factions. The higher the better. But I have to warn you that this score is the least important thing when determining the reaction of other factions. Warlords are rather pragmatic and will seek their personal interests and evaluate the balance of powers to take their decision. Remember, it's nothing personal. 
to sum it up, your diplomatic strength lies in your army size. Okay. So we've got 6,000 men ready to fight. We've got three characters, which are Bai, Chongji, Li Longreng, and Huang Xiaogong. And I guess they each have a, a role to play. This, okay, this seems pretty complex. I, I, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. Okay, we've got 100 rifles, which is weird considering we didn't have any guns before. Okay, so we are allied with. What's that? That's Manchuria or something, isn't it? Okay. Who's who? Interact with other characters. Access to this. Fighting units. Let's have a look at what fighting units we have. Units in the province. Guangxi Pacification Army of only 2,000 men. And then a load of bandits. Right. Okay, so we've got six six thousand men in total. By the looks of things. Okay. Okay. Ah, so that right, the text has come back. So what do we just click on the province? Maybe. Ah, here we are. Oh wow. Maybe Heizhou is probably the best place to go. Maybe we'll just keep 2,000 men. It's kind of strange if we're kind of sharing the... Oh, okay, there, there was... Looks like there's supposed to be a border here. Oh, no, they're rivers. Oh, I see, they're not borders at all, they're rivers. is a big thing in China, huh? Okay. I used to live with a guy from uh, Wuhan. One of the smartest guys I've ever met. He lives in New Zealand now. Or so I think. Okay, so if we just take... Hmm. I think we can gamble and move 4,000 men to take Asia. Let's, let's do it. Let's move. Ah, okay, we can only... <laughs> we can only move that amount of men. All right. The real attack began after a long and deadly shelling that spread panic in the defenders. These attackers led an inspiring charge against outgunned defenders. Right. Surrounded on all sides by the enemy, the defense defenders could not find a way to retreat. The attacker remains master of the field, while his enemy broken is a complete in, incomplete route. For this victory, the attacker earns 10 face. The defeating army, defending army has been annihilated. So, okay, Li Zhongreng here has won. Okay, I thought I thought there was going to be a city map, and then we could overtake like train stations and shit like that. But there looks to be battle it's okay and it's so so we lost two but then they lost two cap is that right so we had zero then minus one left us on 99 and then he lost two, which somehow he lost 2,000 bandits. Okay. But there was two battle reports. 
So, huh? Weird. All right. So we've won that. At least we know we've won it. Uh. Now. Now, what do, do we want to like improve friendship with uh, Shen Hon Ying? Right. So yeah, the, the old Guangxi clique is these guys. Because we could probably afford to maybe leave these guys alone, but at least we've taken Hezhou. Well, in that case, then I'm going to make sure he goes to Lai Bin. And that gives us a, a bit of. Yeah, that, that, would, that, would, that would give us scope to, 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 to do things, right? What's that? Is that saying that they're out of supply or something? are essential to keep your army supplied. Try to have more coolies than fighters to and recruit more coolies when you have. Uh, their life expectancy, however, is low. All old armies obey sometimes. Your armies have a hidden loyalty score. If it's too low, they won't follow your orders and may even switch sides. Paying your armies is one of the ways you can keep them loyal. So we have to make sure to try and pay them. We're also the paymaster. <laughs> Unless you pay them, warlord armies tend to uh, depreciate or depredate. Depredate the territory that they occupy. Okay, that. Real badass warlords don't fight. The stronger your army, the more the chances enemy armies will betray and rally to your cause. So don't spend your manpower in hard fighting if you are able to bribe them. Right. Oh man, this is this is a this is a complicated game. This is more complicated than I was bargaining for, but we'll we'll learn as we go along along. Um Inspect. New defense army. How, how can we fight? How can we bribe? And too poor to sustain your troops. Uh, so let me get this straight. Not enough coolies. Right, how do we how do we equip them with, with coolies? Recruit coolies, right, okay. Ah, so we do we do have the coolies. Ah, okay. Pay troops. Recruit soldiers, promote officer, reclaim the district. Just reclaim the district. Uh, right, recruit and trade. Right, okay, order and peacekeeper. No actions available. 
So how do we get food? Do we just have to get more coolies? Okay, what about you? Not enough coolies, right. Okay, well, you're... What about equipment? Rifles, machine gun, armoured cars. Oh, we've got... Maybe we could... <laughs> wow. All right. So we can actually give machine guns and artillery to certain armies as well, if we wanted to. Shit the bed. Oh, this guy's... What? Oh, what? And now they've dropped down to... To one cage. Oh. Oh, well, this isn't good. <laughs> so there's t nearly 2,000 men here, but they've only got 100 rifles? Oh, no, they do have 200. They've got 2,000 rifles each. liking the fact that huh. oh so they do have machine guns but we just don't have any more on hand all right but there seems to be 2,000 men still here But it's saying 1k. I'm not not truly understanding what that means. Okay, click on a report on the left to display a detailed action report. Oh, oh, oh we lost a lot of coolies. We lost nearly 600 coolies. Six hundred coolies? Just just like that? Alright, well I think that was our actions for the week, so I guess, I guess we'll just have to learn as we go. Building or looting. Yeah, you've probably seen that the game offers you many policy and infrastructure building actions. In this game, building your provinces takes a lot of time. And a lot of resources while looting and increasing the tax burden is easy and gives you quick and immediate rewards okay so why should you act differently than an unconscious warlord this is a short military scenario behave like a warlord patiently developing your economy is rewarding in the long run but when playing a short scenario in a province Ravaged by bandits and local warlords, you won't have time for nation building. Alright. In fact, most local policies would uh, take longer. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, here we are. As another army retreats. This guy doesn't have any coolies again. thousand troops let's move in and take them 
real attack began after a brief but intense shelling. The attackers are crushed under the deluge of shells and the losses are appalling. The defenders pro proved to be very determined and have remained in control of the field. The attackers begin an inglorious retreat back to their starting positions. We lose 10 face. technically out like again so he, he was pushed back and then he, he automatically started to fight his own allies just because he was pushed back seems a bit improbable that one huh. so what I'm thinking what that means a medium army that means a large army Grangy cliques strengths. Okay, the, the faction you're playing has some real strengths and very few weaknesses. All your characters are very able. Well, they don't seem very able if they keep getting walked over. You have a unique combination of complementary and useful characters. Li Zhongren and Bai uh, Chongxi are very competent strategists, while Huang Xiaohong would be perfect as a civil governor. Your army can be organized on the nationalist model of the Chinese Nationalist Republic, whose support is trained and organized by Soviet advisors. This gives many more organizational actions than your enemies. Try to create a political department in each of your armies as soon as you can. It will unlock other use of Okay. What? What? Uh, promote officer? Whenever the, whatever the cause, this unit won't move anymore this turn. But somehow they're of immense quality. I'm. Okay, we've got a major general just managed to sort out. I'm a little bit perplexed. It's saying we need to start. Okay, there's did pop up then, but I guess not. Action management. Okay. Central Executive Ministers. Chairman. Permanent member. That's. Can we do anything? No, we can't do anything with these guys. Can we drag? No. Alright. Well, that's probably something for another time then. But we need to figure out what we're going to do about this this army down here. Right, this this guy. He's got one to five thousand men. He's got ten to hundred machine guns and five to twenty-five artillery, as well as okay. Let's let's see if we can try and bribe other people. Try and bribe him. Who is talking about treason here? No, this is just a story of an officer returning to the fold. Ah, for the great good of China. 
course, every officer should be rewarded with a promotion. That is what you are promising these men. The officers are quite unsatisfied by the actual conduct of the war, and the possibility of switching sides is really appealing to them. Promise, okay. Promises of more autonomy for their dear native province is another good argument that seems to gain their favour. Okay. The discussion went smoothly as you both came from the same province, and even if you are not the same side, you develop strong ties. Loyalty minus 10, relation to your faction minus plus 11. We should talk again later. So what, do I just bribe him with more money? And a bunch of opium addicts. Right, let's just chuck money at the problem. Okay, we're, we're getting the same thing over and over again. Money's going down. So no idea. Uh, let's let's get some more coolies involved. Yeah, you're, you're missing out on a few coolies on that man. You're you're really suffering with no coolies. Okay, so we're out of actions. We just on the defensive all of a sudden. We've pretty much lost <laughs> any population center. You know, I, could, I could maybe move him next turn over to Hechi. But, uh, yeah. Tired of chasing your enemies all around? Well, I'm being the one being chased here. In this game, you patiently move your armies to encircle the enemy so he can't escape. Drive him in all the time to lower his loyalty so he won't move too much. More straightforward strategies will find you chasing defeated armies all around the map until he, that drives you mad. Yeah. Bandits can be bought. Only a fool would fight bandits. Oh, now, now he tells me. Real warlords recruit them. If the unit has nowhere to flee to, it will be destroyed. Ah! Did we unintentionally, because he moved there, unintentionally destroy an army? Or did he just reappear back down in Nani? Nani? Right, okay, well, I'll tell you what we'll do then. We'll. How many? Okay. Let's. Pay to leave towards the west. That might be quite interesting. Or I could just recruit them. I'm going to recruit them. A bandit leader is suspicious or a skilled haggler. And the negotiation seems to go nowhere. Knowing that his decision will probably be a tipping point in the current struggle, you may make a better offer. We'll give him a higher rank, we can't offer more. We will immediately pay your men as soldiers. Well, hmm, a bandit leader. What do we do? Shall we make the men soldiers or shall we just give the man a higher rank? Well, I think, I think we'll just, uh, okay, this is a cheap way of get, getting one's loyalty. The rank of the officer will be higher. And so his paycheck. The army will join your side. Other officers may be jealous and lose loyalty points. You already paid a lot for this negotiation. This will triple the price, but the army will join your side with a boost in loyalty. Okay, well, we'll just pay him as soldiers then. Okay, so how many were there? 2,000. With some rifles, no artillery. But, okay, what I'll do then... Ah, we don't have any spares. Right. Oh, okay. Hmm. 
He's down to... Oh, oh my god. Okay, so we can't recruit and train anybody. Can we even combine these two armies? I guess not. Oh, did M might mean militia. Does that mean militia? Hmm. Okay, we're going to move. There is something wrong. The commander explains that the most of the army is on the move, but you have no clear report on the exact position of the units. You quickly start suspecting that the army is still in its barracks. However, their commander reassured you it is just today to recruit more coolies for the bulk of the troop and leading columns you are already on their way right you totally trust that commander as you have created the move uh, uh, right, okay loyalty issues Oh, they've got their, okay, so he was telling the truth, he's got no coolies. Okay, so we're going to have to wait. Okay, alright, next week then. Major defeat. I thought we had 23 turns. Alright. Okay, well. Whoops. Okay, so that quit the game, but we'll go back into it. Weird. Okay, we'll play. We'll do we'll do that one more time. And then see if we can change the outcome. Because right, we know we know all this. And we'll just start. Okay. Now, would it, would it then be wiser to just recruit the bandits? Okay, we'll, we'll give him a higher rank. So, they're on our side now. And he can just sit there. He can just sit there, don't mind. Shall we just recruit some coolies? Quite possibly. Let's, let's try it. Because everybody seems to lack enough coolies. Let's do that. And then instead of sending him up north to fight bandits, let's move to Liberia. Ah, okay, so yeah, the, the, the coolies are, as, as said, are the logistics, and it's good to make sure you have an overabundance of them before you move. Alright, okay, next week then. Okay, we were forced back. Yeah, all old armies, logistic relies on coolies, yeah. So they, we lost 2,000 coolies. Oh. Ah. Alright, 
this is this is a bit more interesting. So we could probably recruit some more soldiers and then more coolies. And then we've got two blocks of 5,000 sitting there ready to really fight. Alright, this is better than that. Aha. Did that make him flee all the way back there? What's this? Now that now there's a tension in Haizhou, reports an unbearable burden. The unpaid soldiery weighs very heavily on the region. Too poor to feed such an army valiantly invests by dropping. Ah, okay, so we can actually click on the town and then build some stuff. Right, Weizhou. Security, gun repair shop, smuggling rifles, organized peasant militias. Right, okay, so we just. That wasn't very obvious to, to click on the city and then do stuff like that. Right. So let's have a look at this battle report now. What does he. attack began after a long and deadly shelling. Okay, and he's got tons of artillery. But we can't seem to... to hold up against. But he seems adamant to stay. He's too poor to supply the troops. So what, do I just con me and travel? Teaching modern agriculture. All right, let's do that then. This is what we'll do then, we'll just recruit these bandits. And then, oh. Do they, do they, they have no coolies at all. So, and we don't even have. <laughs> what on earth? We're gonna to have to figure this out because the fact that food just goes like that and there doesn't seem to be anything that we can really do. Okay, supplying troops, coolies and rails. Most of the time your armies live off the country and an army of coolies is carrying their supplies. The country can support a thousand men strong for each five dollars of agriculture revenue. This area is too poor to sustain your troops for their full potential. Make sure to recruit a lot of coolies before moving the coolies. The simple act of moving your army will consume coolies. If the area doesn't produce enough to support your army, has poor roads or is suffering from a calamity like food or plague for example, you will consume even more coolies. When you are not when they when there are not enough coolies, you will start losing your men. They desert, some become bandits, or just die of starvation. Needless to say that the morale and loyalty of the will decrease. So what do I just recruit more coolies just to
keep them in check. Because that doesn't sound like a bright idea to me. Let's just play this out and see what happens between these du dudes because if they've got no food either Has he suddenly all, all of a sudden taken that city when we've been sitting on it for all this time? Do we do we have to like move him and I will. I I I, I think maybe going forward I'm going to probably have to read the wiki back to back before streaming this because there's a there's a lot of depth to this game that I'm not picking up on quite just yet but I'll tell you what I'll move, I'll move to uh, Baez Twenty-five rifles. Ah, so they're not really an army at all, they're not. Fruit some coolies. Now, how many? <laughs> Funny. All right, let's 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 go to Lajo. The commander explains that the most of the army is on the move, but you ah okay. So they they didn't they didn't move because we what well, didn't pay them. Some reason we can't pay him. I, 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 I don't. And we still can't pay him. No one wants. No one wants to pay these troops. What is? What is going on? Let's be cheeky. Let's move you again. Shall we just 
take Lysho. Lysho gives less money, but okay, we'll, we'll assume it won't move. It is like a monkey trying to um, figure out the most complex thing it's ever had to deal with. Right, so you've got loads of coolies. Right, we're going to pay you, and then we're going to tell you to move. But there's a red arrow. So, oh, he does want to move. Victory is ours. Against Tang Hao Ming. So we defeated Tang Hao Ming, but. Right, okay, I should have read that. Actions again, so we'll have to see how our army now degrades. Why well, you can't split your armies? Do you want to move again? Okay, he's not. Taking these cities and towns, but they're not converting. I think we may have just lost again, and I may just have to. Shortcuts, cheat codes. Missing something. Pin. Okay. He's, for whatever, whatever reason, he won't move. They don't want to get paid because we ain't got no money. Defeat. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just ran out of. Man. Okay. Well, I mean, that, that was a short demonstration. Um of how bad I am at this game already. But uh, I think, I think maybe, we'll just say that this is the test run. This is the test run, and I'm gonna try and read up more about how to play this game, and then we'll redo it. Because there, there, there seems to be a lot of mechanics, and even the notes there said there's a lot of hidden mechanics which I'm not understanding because I, if I've got an army taking a, 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 an area 
and it's still staying loyal to the other person. I, I'm going to have to reread and, and, and pay attention a bit more, I think. But I'm, I'm looking forward to, to maybe making this game appear more on the channel because I think it's very interesting. It's a very under represented part of history and, it's, and obviously it's a very important part of history of why that part of the world is the way it is and I'm looking forward to maybe learning more about it. Very sad that we couldn't be the green game from the off but maybe we'll get that once we complete the tutorial or something who knows and we can even steal the game's art apparently which is nice uh, but yeah Thanks for tuning in, Richard, and anyone else who gave me the time of day for this one. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see you on the next one, ladies and gents. I'm going to bow out with my tail between my legs. But hey, that's how you know it's live, right? Catch you later, everyone. <laughs>